Lala, produced by uh, uh, Robert Redford. It's a documentary about Leonard's case and what happened to him. <laughs> and that incident during in Pine Ridge Reservation back in 1975 that got Leonard arrested was the FBI were searching <coughs> for three men, Dino Butler, Rob Robidoux, and Leonard Peltier. They caught two of the men, Dino Butler and Rob Robidoux, and a jury found them, um, acquitted them on the grounds of self-defense. If Leonard was caught, he'd be a free man Thank then. You. Somebody so can yield you some more time if you uh, want. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to yield some time to this gentleman here. No, you no, they have to yield to you if you want to keep talking. Uh, you have two minutes. <coughs> yes, um, actually I prepared a statement that's about two minutes long. I, I'm yeah. going to have to read pretty fast, though. My name is uh, Tomas Reyes, and I'm with the uh, American Indian Movement uh, West out of San Francisco. In any case, let me get going. As to whether Leonard Peltier is guilty, Leonard is guilty of one thing only standing up for his people when he was needed because they were living in a climate of fear, intimidation, and murder created by the collusion of local goons, corporate interests, and agencies of the federal government on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Given this climate, it should not be surprising that two government agents were killed during this period along with many, many more Indians. Whether people agree or not, a grand jury agreed, I mean a jury agreed, that the climate created contributed extensively to the regrettable death of the two agents, consequently, um, and consequently set the two, uh, two of Leonard's co-defendants, um, set free two of Leonard's co-defendants on the grounds of, of self-defense. Now, almost 35 years of incarceration later, one of, one of the things that should matter, and that is, <coughs> uh, that is, um, that should matter is that there is respect for <coughs> the principle of justice to which no one can claim ex exclusive ownership and the rule of law that we hear so much about. So far, Leonard, uh, and by extension, Indian peoples have only received outlaw justice under the veil of judicial propriety. This constitutes an offensive falsification of the justice principle and, and, and equally offensive display of institutionalized racism abuse of power and privilege against Leonard and all his relatives. This gross miscarriage of justice in Leonard's case begs attention because it violates all of us. And while it persists, will continue to uh, discredit the principle of justice, a road respect for genuine rule of law in this country and around the world. As it increases the likelihood. Uh, uh, excuse me. If somebody wants to yield you some of their time, you could have an opportunity to finish it. <coughs> do you want to yield or do you want to speak for yourself? Why don't you just yield a minute? To, you said you only want to speak for 30 seconds. Why don't you yield a minute to him? Let him finish. Thank you. But you've got to start going. You're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to find out Lost my place. place. Um, in this country and around the world, as it increases the likelihood that what has happened to Leonard will continue to happen to others until we all put a stop to it. It is time to do what is right by Leonard. It should be apparent that Leonard does not belong in prison, if only on the basis that he was never given due process or a fair trial because of unlawful government complicity and misconduct. Yet he and we continue to be punished. Keeping him incarcerated at this point helps no one but does hurt everyone, whether they think so or not, even our enemies. The, um, so the American Indian Movement West is delighted that this action is happening in Berkeley today on behalf of Leonard Peltier. Respectfully, uh, Tomas Reyes on behalf of uh, AIM West. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So you have a minute and 13 seconds. <laughs> you don't have to speak, you know, it's not like it's mandatory. So, hi, thanks. I'm Wendy Cannon, and I'm the chair of the Berkeley Peace and Justice Commission, and it's a privilege to be able to fill that role and uh, I'm appointed by Council Member Chris Worthington. So um, I just feel very proud to be a resident of Berkeley where um, you know, we honor Indigenous Peoples Day and we don't observe Columbus Day. We, we endorse the UN uh, Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples as a municipality. And we've taken a position against the U.S.-Mexico border wall. Um, this coming Monday, we are going to be uh, having a public forum on um, criminal justice issues and restorative justice. Um, and 
uh, you know, we're doing such important things. Um, for me personally, Leonard Peltier has been an inspiration um, since my college days in New York City when uh, a bunch of students changed the street name of Astor Place to Peltier Place. And uh, that was 1992. And I'm just very proud to uh, see the city of Berkeley rallying behind Leonard Peltier. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we have it before us. Moved and Move seconded. the item. Second, second. Second. Council I have a question for the chair of the commission. If, if this resolution was passed by the Peace and Justice Commission, why don't we have a recommendation from the Peace and Justice Commission in front of us? Um, so it did pass the commission, and Council Member Worthington um, also, uh, okay, basically, um, this month was Leonard Peltier's 66th birthday. It was on September 12th. Um, the item came to the Peace and Justice Commission on the 13th, and it was passed. And um, I believe, I, I don't want to speak for Council Member Worthington, but I believe it's in the spirit of uh, celebrating Leonard Peltier's birthday, and there was a celebration in Berkeley, and with Indigenous Peoples Day coming up, that after it passed the commission, he moved it um, to the council. So this is going to be an exception. Generally, items from the Peace and Justice Commission will